Hello and welcome to this quick video. This is about a weird thing that can sometimes happen with iNav in particular when you are messing around with OSD elements. Now I recently did a video where I test flew and set up this Atom RC Penguin. It is a fantastic model and by default it comes set up for CRSF when you flash the firmware and upgrade everything. And I didn't use CRSF, I changed it to SBUS because that's just happened to be the receiver that I have lots of in the spares bin. And that was the root of a weird problem that I started to have. Just before I was going out to fly and I was doing the final checks, I powered it all up, made sure the walk snail goggles were working okay. I'd done my layout as I normally do on all of my models. I actually have a standard set of coordinates that I tend to load in and save onto each of my models so everything is positioned in exactly the same location. So that's a common look and feel. But when I looked in the goggles right in the middle of the screen where there isn't anything defined in the OSD tab, I had two weird elements specifically related to CRSF. One was the CRSF link quality and the other one was the CRSF transmission power. Now this was a problem that I wrestled with for about two hours. I hadn't ever seen it before. I assumed when I looked in my goggles that I'd accidentally enabled those things or more likely hadn't turned them off. Going into the OSD tab, they weren't displayed, they weren't shown. I tried doing everything, updating the goggles, updating the transmitter. I then went through and deleted all of the settings in the OSD and I still had these two random elements appearing in my on-screen display. Now, if we look at my default, this was the one where I was having the problem. If I kind of scroll down, we can see in here, this is where all of the on-screen display stuff is actually held and defined. My normal OSD layout, goes to about there. Those are the standard pieces that you see in the display that I fly with regularly using with walk snail. However, you'll see these additional elements here. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get rid of them. And in fact, two of these here are the reason that those additional elements appear, even though I don't want them. And by having a feature turned off in iNav, I couldn't even get to them to turn them off, which is a really weird situation. Now, the way this is laid out, each of these lines is an OSD layout. Then we have the page that it's on, because remember you have multiple layouts that you have. Then you have the actual number of the OSD elements. Each of these uh, refer to a specific element. And there is a chart showing which numbers relate to which elements in the iNav docs, link below. Then these are the coordinates on the screen that that element will appear at. And then you either have H or V at the end. H for hidden, V for visible. Now in this stuff, which is what I normally would have in my setup, you can see these are all V apart from that top one. They are all visible, but there are two down here, which correspond to the CRSF uh, quality and also the CRSF transmission power that are set as V. So they are going to be displayed, even though they don't appear in my OSD tab. So what can you do? Well, I've actually set up um, and asked for this to be fixed in iNav. I uh, did raise this a couple of days ago as I've um, come recording this. And uh, Darren, good old Darren, uh, Mr. D following style, if you're not already watching his stuff on YouTube, do check it out. He's already come back and he's looking at maybe doing some configurator changes. But he his suggestion was the one that I figured out. What you have to do is you have to basically cut the lines that are showing as V for visible and edit them so it has H at the end and then copy those two things into the CLI, hit paste, and then that will take care of them. The weird thing is with this is that once an OSD element has been configured and moved about on the screen, it's always going to be in this table, even if it's then hidden after the fact. And that's because if you'd ever noticed, if you go and then re-enable an element that you maybe took off before, maybe it's the variometer or something else, it appears back in the original location. The reason is, is because these locations are stored, but then what it's doing is it is just changing the V to H. So it's always in here. Now, the reason that I ended up with these two orphaned OSD elements in my screen 
as I said at the beginning, is because initially it's configured with CRSF. The OSD was set up with CRSF specific on-screen display elements configured and shown on the screen. When I changed it to SBUS, those options were hidden. And that meant that I couldn't then find them in the OSD tab to turn them off. So that's the big trick. Hopefully this will be fixed in a future revision. There will be an easy way for you to basically set everything as hidden or delete that table because I couldn't find a way to delete those OSD elements. Once they're there, they're like herpes or airport luggage. You have them forever. But if you could get rid of them, that would mean then you could basically start from scratch. But that's what I found. If you find that you are doing a setup and you have some OSD elements that appear on the display and you can't play around with them, it's because whatever part of iNav had been turned on that allowed those OSD elements to appear in the OSD tab has then subsequently been turned off. And unfortunately, that means that you can't get to those anymore to change it. But the easiest way to do it, I'd recommend is come in, have a look at which weird and wacky ones have got the V set on for being visible, and then use that little trick like Darren is showing me here, where you just set it to H, you just basically copy those lines, edit it so it has a H at the end, and then hit enter on the CLI stuff, and it'll take care of it. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.